WCBI News at 10 starts now. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Quentin Smith. Leaders in Columbus and Lowndes County sit down with concerned residents to discuss ways to improve the community. During tonight's forum, everyone was paired off into six different groups to talk about issues they believe are plaguing the community. Crime, lack of recreational facilities, and improved education were some of residents' biggest concerns. Now, organizers say their goal is to work on resolving these issues to help get things moving in the right direction. To me, one of the most important things about just uh, coming together and having a conversation is just that. It's, it's the conversation. We're having a dialogue and we're, uh, we're being real with each other. We're being open with each other and we're just uh, we're talking about those things that are passionate to us. And uh, one of the things that I've said numerous times is it's, it's just as important to hear the tone of what people are saying as it is to hear the words that people are saying. Now, this marks the first time that the Lowndes Community Foundation has held a public meeting. However, after tonight's feedback, members say they're planning on having another one in the near future. Left lane drivers, listen up. Rules of the road in Mississippi could soon be changing. The idea is to keep the left lane open for emergency and passing vehicles only. Courtney Ann Jackson explains. You may get a look of disapproval from other drivers, but that's all you'll get right now if you take your time in the left lane. It's a new fine for a new violation. Currently, it's not against the law to drive slow in the left lane. This is a change lawmakers have considered several years now. It passed the House last legislative session, but later died in a committee. House Bill 80 makes it so that folks can't hold up traffic in the left lane. If they do, they'll get fined. Frustrated drivers say bring it on. Get in your lane. You have a whole lane designated for you. Just get in your lane. The bill lists the reasons when left lane driving would be allowed. They're for passing, exiting, or if the right lane is in disrepair or under construction. Drivers say they think it would make the highway safer. See, I'm riding in the lane, slow poking on the phone, texting, um, just driving slow, wrong lane. It's just trouble getting over when you're behind a person and they riding slow. You have to get over, jump over, keep them. From having accidents. So, what about this fine? The bill sets it between five and fifty dollars. I ask drivers if they think it's enough to deter the left lane slowpokes. Yeah, because it adds up. So, yeah, I think it's enough. If you, you get it too many times, it adds up. So, that's, that's, that's enough for me. Both the House and Senate have now passed the bill. Governor Bryant's office tells us he does plan to sign it into law. It would take effect July 1. It's now the end of an era in Mississippi and national politics. Today, Senator Thad Cochran announces his, his intention to resign from the U.S. Senate on the 1st of April. Cochran cites his health as an ongoing challenge. In a statement, Cochran said he intends to complete the appro pro appropriation cycle before retiring. Cochran is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriations. Now, Cochran was the first Republican since Reconstruction to win a statewide election contest in Mississippi when he replaced Senator Jim Eastland back in 1978. He's also the 10th longest serving senator in U.S. history. The Pontotoc native originally was elected to U.S. representative for three terms. Governor Phil Bryant must name a replacement for Cochran's seat, and a special election has not yet been scheduled. A line of heavy thunderstorms rolled through parts of our viewing area tonight, and the worst hit area seems to have been Montgomery County. We received word of, of hail, roof damage, and trees down. An 18-wheeler also left the road, possibly due to the wind, and ended up in a ravine off of Highway 82 near Highway 51. Now, some of those storms also made it into our viewing area. For the latest, we go to meteorologist Amanda Reynolds, who's standing by with a first look at our forecast. Amanda? Yeah, thanks, Quentin. Right now, you can see, actually see that line of storms stretching just to the southeast of Columbus, all the way back to Eupora, Grenada, and back into the Delta. Now, we mentioned those storms uh, that were developed earlier back towards Winona. Notice the hail. This is our hail swath. You can see that line of hail pretty much followed to the south and east up to an inch in some areas. We also had several storm reports, uh, one over in Carrollton and then another few over near Winona. Not only hail, but also those gusty winds that you mentioned that blew over that semi semi trailer. Now, as we go forward through the rest of this evening, we'll see temperatures dropping down into the mid 40s. Again, we will keep some more of those rain and storms through the overnight hours. But once we get to tomorrow morning, we'll start to clear out a little bit more and more on your forecast in just a few minutes. Thanks so much, Amanda. 
A night out in Octubaha County leaves a Smithville man with more than a hangover and a bar tab. On Saturday night, the Octubaha County Sheriff's Department responded to an assault call in the Highlands Plantation community near Starkville. Deputies att attempted to arrest Peyton Bradley Horn of Smithville. Now, Horn reportedly tried to assault one of the officers. He's now charged with public drunkenness, resisting arrests, and simple assault on an officer. His bond is set at $11,000, and that officer was not seriously injured. Octubaha County deputies need your help in a domestic violence case. Sean Michael Sanders is wanted for possession of a weapon by a felon, as well as domestic violence and aggravated assault. The Starkville resident was last seen around noon today in the area of Wood Street wearing a blue flannel and jeans. Sanders is around 5'7 and weighs 135 pounds. Police say he has brown hair, brown eyes, and multiple tattoos. If you have any information on Sanders, you're asked to contact Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers or call 911. A suspect continues to recover after he leaves law enforcement on a chase, then allegedly rams a sheriff's car and is shot when, deputy, when, when he charges the deputy. It was Sunday evening when 911 received calls about a man driving a Jeep through people's yards on Murphy Road in Itawamba County. Eyewitnesses say they saw the man driving the black Jeep erratically, making donuts in the street and grass and endangering others. One resident says he thought the suspect was going to run over his daughter-in-law during the incident. My daughter-in-law was on the porch uh, uh, here at her house, and she was hollering at him, uh, we got children, we got children, and we got kids. And then that's when he came up in the yard, uh, and I thought uh, for at that point in time he was going to run over my daughter-in-law because he was heading the vehicle, headed right straight towards her porch. Now, deputies chased 27-year-old Daniel Klaus to Highway 371, where he allegedly rammed a parked Itawamba County Sheriff's car. Investigators say Klaus got out, charged the deputy, who was then forced to shoot him. Now, Klaus is alive, but there is no word on his condition. Now, that deputy was not injured, and the Lee County Sheriff's Department is now handling this investigation since that's where the chase ended. Well, once we make it through the rain and the storms tonight, we will have more sunshine for the rest of the work week, and we'll see some cooler air as well. More on your forecast right after the break. Your first alert forecast with meteorologist Amanda Reynolds. Plenty of heavy rain out there across the Golden Triangle region, stretching just to the southeast of Columbus through Columbus, back towards Eupora and Grenada. So if we put this into motion, notice all of those showers moving off pretty much to the east. So once that front clears you, the front all the way back here in the delta right now, you'll be clear and dry, and those clouds will start to clear out as well. Uh, we'll jump over to our sky cam over in Vernon, our computers being a little bit glitchy but again you do see those clouds still up in the sky but most of us hanging out in the low 60s pretty much everyone uh, now reporting at least some rain with the exception of Tupelo that rain has stayed well to your south or and you're actually staying fairly dry this evening so again most of us going to continue to see those rain and storms at least through the overnight hours but once we clear that rain out we will see a sunny end to the work week and we'll also see a little bit of cooler air but speaking of those storms this is a live radar look from earlier we had this one storm that moved through Winona and down off uh, to the southeast closer to Louisville now that actually produced some heavy downpours as well as some hail uh, and some strong winds but notice those cloud tops the brighter the colors that's where those higher clouds cloud tops and the stronger storms where you can see this one that went over our area, one other one just south uh, close to uh, Vicksburg and into the Jackson area that actually produces a uh, tornado warning. We had a little bit of shear here in our area. Notice the green that continued to push off to the south and east. Notice there were two in fact severe thunderstorm warnings issued for this one cell. Did show a little bit of rotation, but the biggest uh, threat with that was actually some strong hail. Now as we go forward, I think we moved the hail swath up, up earlier, but here let's zoom in on radar. You can see here in Columbus, relatively light rain. There is this batch of rain just off to our west, so that will continue to push in over the next maybe 10 or 15 minutes. As you drop down to the south, that rain now mo moving off to the east, so down by Macon, you're in the clear by this point. Starkville, the heavy rain now off to your north, uh, as well as Eupora and back towards Duck Hill, Kilmichael, and Winona. You're pretty much in the clear now. The rain going to be stopping pretty much momentarily, but as I mentioned, up to the north, not too much as far as the way of rain. We have had a few cells start to develop with a little bit of that instability, but it's pretty much going away now, so we won't see too much more as far 
as the rain is concerned. Again, as I mentioned, most of us hanging out in the low to mid 60s will drop down into the 40s overnight tonight. Again, we will keep those rain and storms at least through around, say, 2 or 3 a.m., but we will start to clear out. Again, tomorrow we're going to be beautiful and sunny. We'll be up in the mid and upper 60s for most of us. Again, pretty much not a cloud in the sky. Those rain showers will clear out overnight tonight, and by the time we get to, say, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, that's when we'll start to see those clear skies. So pretty nice sunrise tomorrow morning as well. Again, nice and sunny for the rest of the work week. We will have another chance at some rain and storms by the time we get to next weekend. This is it. High school basketball teams are trying to punch their tickets to the championship. Tom has hot likes later in sports. Welcome back, everyone. Colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the U.S. However, it's also treatable in the early stages. But the problem is there are few symptoms. That's why screening is so important. We learn more this week in Health Talk with Baptist. Hey, I'm Dr. Richard Hurd, part of the gastroenterology team at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. I want to talk to you about colon cancer. The colon is the last section of your intestines, also known as the large intestine. It helps you absorb the water and nutrients that you swallow. The colon commonly develops small growths in it called polyps, similar to the moles on your skin. When these polyps are allowed to grow without removing them, they can turn into colon cancer. Colon cancer is more common than you think, and everyone is at risk for it. The lifetime risk of developing colon cancer, according to the American Cancer Society, is 1 in 20. You may be at increased risk if you have a family history of colon cancer, especially a parent, sibling, or child. If any of these were diagnosed with cancer before age 60, your risk is even higher. An inactive lifestyle is also a risk factor, as is obesity. Smoking and alcohol abuse increase your risk. Living healthy and avoiding these risk factors can help decrease your chances of developing colon cancer. African Americans are at higher risk for colon cancer than other races, so much so that the American College of Gastroenterology recommends they begin screening early at age 45. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist when we will discuss how to prevent colon cancer. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. A West Point woman has been chosen to lead a statewide nonprofit organization. Martha Allen will be the new executive director for Extra Table. The Hattiesburg-based organization provides healthy food in bulk to food pantries and soup kitchens at below wholesale cost. Now, Extra Table serves 32 counties. However, Allen would like to expand its reach into every county in the state. Allen has worked with the Growth Alliance in West Point and most recently, the Pines and Katie Hill Recovery Center in Columbus. New Hope and Louisville fighting it for a chance at the 4A title. Highlight from Jackson, next in sports. Sports with Tom Apple. One more win and you're in. The final four tipping off today in Jackson. Teams looking for a spot in the title game. Start with the girls. Louisville taken on by Halia in the 4A semifinals. Early on for the Lady Cats, Ariana Hunter drives, finds Cameron Rogers in the corner for the triple. Lady Cats take the lead on that basket. And more from Louisville. Hunter finds Tamiya Dora inside, drains the spot up jumper. That's a pretty shape up, Jay. And still in the first in transition, Dora taking advantage, wide open alone on the fast break, gets it in for two. But fourth quarter, Louisville down here. Hunter to Manaya Taylor inside. She misses, but battling inside. That's the way you corral your own miss. 
and make the basket. And later on off the fast break, Jalen Ingram to Cameron Rogers with the lay-in. Louisville would charge hard back into the game, but it'd be by Halia that gets the W, 47-40 over Louisville. And to the boys, New Hope facing off against Corinth for the 4A boys semifinal. Early on, R.L. Maddox finds Andrew Junkin inside. Grown man take for the big fella in for two. Trojans with the early lead, but here comes Corinth. Tata Strickland finds Dontavious Sheffield from the charity stripe for the mid-range J and more from Corinth. Sheffield to Strickland. Nice fadeaway jumper for two. That's pretty basketball. New Hope still leading, and they would answer. Tyler Stevenson drives, spins. That's a signature floater for Tyler. He'd get that shot to go. New Hope would trail by one and a half. Fourth quarter we go. Stevenson putting the team on his back. He'd have 30 points in this game. The first 14 for New Hope in the fourth. But it'd be all Corinth down the stretch. Here comes the showtime. Give and go. John Darius Warren. Alley-oop to Strickland for the two-hand jam. Corinth runs away with the W. 63-46 to over New Hope. Warriors will be advancing to the title game coming up on Thursday. Let's recap our action from today. Pine Grove looking to get back to the state championship, taking on East Marion. Well, the Lady Panthers put on an offensive Clement. There's Taylor Fletcher of the mid-range J. Look at sharing the sugar inside. It's Jesse Mooney for two. Still in the first. Lexi Elliott with a skip pass to Haley Vick in the wing for triple. She'll take all three of these. And keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Fourth quarter, Pine Grove. A well-oiled machine inside to Carly Rogers for two. It's a 17 point lead and later on Vic drives. Nice dish inside. Great catch by Mooney inside for the score. Pine Grove heading back to the 1A state title for the second straight year. They win 62 to 35. Oklahoma boys facing off against Wheeler, looking to punch their ticket to the 1A Boys Championship. Early on for Oklahoma, Jalen Bailey with the steal. Cam Smith, Tomahawk Jam in, uh, with authority. Get pumped, Cam. It's title time. Here more in transition. Jacoria Stanfield on the miss, but the big fella, Ladarius Spears, with the two hand flush and the finish. Oklahoma starts the game with a 22 0 run, but here comes Wheeler. Josh, Jalen in, Jalen Bean inside with the floater for two, cuts into the lead. Wheeler fighting the way back. Cole Swinney to Luke McBrayer inside for the nice finish. It's a friendly roll, friendly roll to go. Third quarter, Oklahoma adding to the lead. Spears inside. Can't stop the big fella. Wheeler trying to answer. Jalen Bean to Alex Wilson with the wing triple. But it'd be way too much Chieftains. Jamal Moore to Jacoria Stanfield at the other end for the easy two. Oklahoma rolls over Wheeler, 88-54. to Chieftains are headed to the title game. But who will they be playing? Holka taking on defend, two-time defending 1A champs out of Ashland. Early on for Holka. Smoothie Turner to Deshaun Barry. Look at the pull-up. Short corner, mid-range J. That's pretty basketball for two, but Ashland's turn. Jamarks Everett trying to find a teammate. Loose ball is going to end up in Mardarius Hobson's hands. You know what's happening here. Two-hand jam in transition. Later on for Ashland, Everett finds Taryn Terry inside. Nice floater off the backboard for two. Still in the first, Ashland's Eric Bell. Look at that rip. He's going to go coast to coast in transition. Got to stop ball. No one does. It's the easy two. To go. The fourth quarter things get good. Ashland up by three, make it five. Eric Bell with the grown man take for two, but Holka would answer. Elijah Buchanan to Smoothie Turner in the corner. Nice head fake. Frees up the mid range floater. He'll get that one to go. But it'd be Ashland's day as they hold on to get a 58 55 win over Holka. The final game for legendary Holka head coach Jimmy McDonald. Ashland versus Oklahoma. 3 p.m. on Thursday for the 1A boys state championship. So 1A and 4A are in the books. Here's what we have to look forward to coming up tomorrow. 2A and 5A girls. No area teams here at the WCBI viewing area were able to punch their ticket to the semifinals in 2A and 5A. But here are the girls. Ingemar taking on Cahoma County at 9 a.m. early tip. Lady Falcons have been an unstoppable force here so far in the 2A playoffs. They'll look to keep it rolling tomorrow. 10.30 a.m. New Site versus Leland. That's 1A as well. Possible all-area matchup with New Site and Ingemar playing tomorrow. We'll see if both of them can jump on in to the title game coming up tomorrow. And then 4 p.m., the defending champs out of 5A, Lafayette taking on Hattiesburg. Lafayette looking to make it back to the state championship and defend their crown. We'll have all the highlights from Jackson coming up tomorrow right here on WCBI Sports. 
Also have to make notice, the state championships game, cha championship games coming up Thursday through Saturday. Go to our website, wcbi.com. Those games will be airing on My Mississippi. Go to your local listing. See where My Mississippi is. We'll have the game times on our website as well as the matchups. Make sure you check. because We've got a lot of area teams that could be playing for a gold ball coming up this weekend. So make sure you know where to tune in. That does it for sports. The last of your forecast is now. Heavy rain still out there through this weekend, so we're going to uh, continue to see these rain showers through the overnight hours. They're going to continue to push off to the north and east. So again, that's something we'll watch for through the overnight hours, but we'll actually see plenty of sunshine uh, by the time we get to tomorrow morning and then for the rest of the work week as well. So it's going to be a pretty nice week ahead. We'll see temperatures uh, not only coming back from... Uh, the 60s tomorrow, and then we'll be back in the 50s for a couple days. But overall, it's going to be fairly nice week okay. uh, going forward. And then we'll actually see some rain showers again as we go into next week. <sighs> I don't want to see rain showers again. No. Sometimes we have to take it. Unfortunately. Have a good night, everyone.